Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 141 of the Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. Today's episode is talking about why I don't teach the Claire's. Claire sentience, Claire audience, Claire. Claire Audi uh what did I just say? You know, if you're if you need to look them up you can. The it's the different kinds of terms applied to psychic um perception. So perceiving through the body, perceiving visual, auditory, Claire uh, uh Claire Yeah, why are they escaping me? <laughs> Y'all know what I mean. If you don't know what I mean, I'm not sure why you're listening. So, I recently um, was given the, mm, I'll say the prompt, to open up a couple of spaces for a, a intense one-on-one, six-month, uh, kind of like an apprenticeship for people wanting to develop their psychic abilities their channeling, their ability to read energy, etc. So I have put that out there. I have, I think, one spot left. I, I, I don't think I could do more than two because it's a lot. Um, I have been training since for 40 years, I realized when I was writing up and this offer isn't, uh, it's not written up. It's not on a web page. It's, that's not what this is. This is a, a very intense program. It's my highest ticket offer. If you want, um, if you want details on it, you can book a discovery call or you can send me an email, uh, or a DM on Facebook is probably the fastest way. Facebook.com forward slash Michelle Wolf 11. Okay, anyway, let's get on with the Claire's thing. I have always sort of bristled at this concept of different Claire's. Claire's and the best that I can determine is we didn't use these terms till the late 1700s. Uh, and I don't want to go into the etymology of it. You can research that yourself. But I, I did wonder why I was always bristly about it. And to me, it, it is another way that mind mucks things up. We want labels. We want categories. We want grids and checklists and statistics. And all of that gets in the way of perception. Perception perceiving all that is around you, perceiving all the different layers and levels of consciousness. We could say non-local consciousness. I can read the energy of someone who's in Sweden. I can read the energy of someone sitting next to me at an event. I don't these days spontaneously receive information from people although I used to but then I was like you know I don't love that they don't know I'm picking this up I don't really want to I can't tell them anything that I'm picking up because it's a little unethical and um I don't want to perceive random information. So we get to have those boundaries. We get to set controls. People who are scared of their mediumship abilities weren't trained well or haven't had training because we get to set the same boundaries with the dead that we do at the living. I mean, unless you're a person who loves drop-ins, I don't let people drop by my house and just show up on the doorstep. Like that's very disturbing to me as a, <laughs> an introvert and probably on the spectrum somewhere and definitely with the ADHD. Like that's disturbing to me. Even if I really love that person, um, it's just, it rattles me. And so it's nothing personal. It's just, I don't do well when uh, people just drop in. So I don't, I don't, I don't uh, encourage that and actively discourage it. It's the same with the dead. You don't want them t uh, talking to you while you're taking a shower or trying to go to sleep at night. You set that limit. You don't. You want to travel and not be inundated by every imprint that's around. You set the boundary. You say, I, I want to visit this city and I don't want to hear from any of y'all. I'm not working with y'all. If you do psychopomp work, like I do, I might do a group 
uh, I might do a, uh, I'll say clearing. It's not really clearing, but I'll do a, a clearing on the city before I travel there. If, for, if there's stuck energies that need to move. Now, those energies aren't actually spirits. Okay, I'm going to go off on a tangent. I'm going to stop myself. The point was the, I could talk all day about this. <laughs> And all the things around it. So the thing about the Claire's is it's an unnecessary labeling system that causes angst. And angst interferes tremendously with your ability to perceive information. So it just bugs me when people are coming into trying to develop their intuition, trying to open up and see what they have naturally and what they can work with, that we present them with this choose from this menu of five to seven, depending on what you're reading, and pick which one you think is you, and then feel bad that you don't have the other ones, and then spend all your energy trying to develop the other ones and feeling bad because you it's hard rather than really amplifying and deepening into the one you naturally have what the fuck that is so unnecessary i'm not blaming anybody who does this right that's what a lot of us get taught this i didn't thank god i didn't get taught this way f from the beginning and i'm really glad I also grew up with the idea that everybody's psychic so um it wasn't that bigger thing now mediumship's a different story but being able to read minds get information sense other people that was i mean was just assumed because everybody does it we use different words for it and if you were to say oh you're having a psychic impression right now a lot of people would be like uh-uh no i'm not don't tell pastor bob <laughs> i'm not doing the devil's work <laughs> is that just in the South? I don't know. But it's not necessary. I don't like, this is just my personality, but I don't like a lot of fluff. I want to go straight to the core of something. I like plain ice cream. If I eat cake, I don't want any frosting on it. I don't want the added stuff on a steak. You know, I just, I'm the purest. <laughs> so I'm that way with my uh abilities as well the channeling the psychicism the mediumship i i just want direct connection i don't want to go through a priest to talk to god i don't want to go you know i don't i love saints but um as archetypes but i don't think that i need a saint to access all that is because all that is is not a fixed point that I need to go to it's not, you know like it, this is what I mean like there's all those mental games wrapped up in it and people then start to do what humans do and they're like, oh I'm Claire audience I'm Claire cognizant I'm Claire uh, what's the vision what clairvoyant and there's this sort of ranking system like this one's better than that one or this one's easier than that one and oh i don't see things i wish i did see things this actually happened i took a long course and there was someone in that course who just angsted the entire time that she couldn't see and i can see visualize now but and I haven't actively tried to. I just asked that my ability to see things be sort of woken up or whatever. Because I want it. I'm curious about it. I want to know what people are talking about. I always thought I did see things, but I didn't. When I had an experience of actually seeing something inside my mind, um, then I knew that I never had before. What was happening for me is my, my body perceives a lot of information and then my mind supplies an image. And that was happening so quickly that I assumed I was seeing. But then I actually saw and I was like, oh, oh, OK, I get it. Like, no, I'm not. I have not been <laughs> seeing anything. I've been picking up physically. OK, but we all pick up physically. We all can see to some degree. We all can hear. We can do all of these things. But here's my here's my point. If you have a, a body, which is the receiver, your vagus nerve is where it all where all the magic happens, and you have a body that 
easily receives information through hearing, through visual, visuals, through uh, feelings in your stomach. That's what happens to me when a client's throat seizes up. I feel it in my throat. As long as we're talking. Once we're done with the session, it doesn't carry on because I have good boundaries. But their stomach clenches up. My stomach clenches up. They start to breathe different. I start to breathe different. That's easy for me. Visualizing, not easy. So I'm curious about it and I asked to pers- experience it. But I have a body that's geared to one or two ways. I hear a lot. But, and and to be honest, if you're into human design, there are auditory channels in your chart that mean you're more likely to be a visualer, visualizer, a hearer, a feeler, a sensor. You can see all that in your human design chart, which is amazing. So quick commercial, planethumandesign.com if you want to book a reading on and focus it on where's where's where am I most likely to be intuitive. So when we give a labeling system, we take our full attention away from what's natural. If you're a person who's clairvoyant and sees a lot of crystal clear images, well, why not just stay there? You can ask for other experiences, but why why let the mind derail progression and development by being angsty over not being able to see or not hearing it? And then it's the comparisonitis even in that world. The world where we should be the most open and the most spiritually guided, immediately our mind is like, oh, whichever one I don't have is better, right? I grew up with very curly hair, which I often was picked on for. But then when I went to the beauty salon, people would always, the same, so predictable. People pay a lot of money to have hair like yours. And I'd be in there paying money to have it straightened, you know, because it was hard to take care of. Now, I wish it was back as thick as it was because I'm getting older and it's thinner and I'm sad. But you know what I mean? Like, it's always, and I always wanted straight hair, right? I grew up in the 70s. I wanted that straight Marsha Brady hair parted down the middle. (laughs) We always want what we don't have. I think it's important to recognize that and call that out in psychic training. I don't like that we do that. And I believe it delays our development. So I'm just offering an alternative view. I'm not saying it's wrong. I don't like it. And this is why I don't like it. I see it holding people back. I feel it restricting the flow of information in people that I've trained, people I've ta- used to have a nine-month, uh, sorry, a six-month course where we went through every center of the body and did energy work. And it holds people back because they're wishing for something that's not there rather than saying, oh my gosh, I have a system that can hear like nobody's business. So let me really zero in and, and get to know this ability to hear. How does it work in this situation? How does it work in that situation? And just really like diving in, let's say reveling in what's already there for you instead of allowing the mind to pull some bullshit and say, well, I have all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't have that one. So let me think about that one all the time. Right? It was really the suffering. And this was an extreme example. But the suffering that woman put her through really was a way probably to avoid doing the actual work because she would just like obsess on, well, I can't do this one. So I must do this one or I'm not a success. That's an extreme example. But there's no reason to feel any, any flicker of angst. Angst is different than curiosity. I was curious about people seeing. I didn't feel bad that I didn't see once I figured out that was happening. I didn't feel bad about it, not for a moment. I was like, oh, what's that like? I mean, I would joke and say I was jealous about it, but I really wasn't because I could feel so much. I could hear so much. I was getting all the information I needed and then some. I could give images to people because my mind would slap an image on what I was seeing. So if they were visual people, I could give them an image. Uh, It wasn't happening in the way true uh, clairvoyance happens or 
clear, let's say clear, uh, clearly seeing images that aren't slapped onto a feeling. <laughs> Maybe it's the difference between seeing an image with your eyes very clearly in reality versus trying to look at something in the fog. Mine, were, mine are foggy. Um, but when we, when we focus programs on that, it's not as effective. It's not wrong. It's not bad. It's not anybody being stupid. It's just not as effective. So part of what my life path has always been is cutting to the chase and and diving underneath all the mentality, the the fog bank, and blowing the fog away and saying, you get to have a direct experience. You don't have to allow your mind to get caught up in labeling systems. This is dark, that is light. This is good, that is bad. The whole point of life for me is to live in the both hand, to have it all. My started, I, I've said before, I started formally studying as an adult is into, uh, as a Buddhist. Um, Non-dual thinking was always fascinating to me. And it still is this non-dual way of holding left and right in your system. And then I taught dialectical behavioral therapy, which is all about teaching people to hold two truths at the same time, that someone can be mad at you and still love you, that you can make a mistake mistake, and it not actually be wrong, you know, that you can hold these concepts and you can overcome or work with the mind's tendency to categorize. That's what your mind's supposed to do. We need to know good plants versus kill you dead plants. We need to know that. We need to know uh, this works for me. This doesn't work for me. Um, I can't eat weed anymore because this awful side effect (laughs) happens consistently. You know, we do need classification. That's what our mind is really good at. Taking a bunch of stuff and sorting it into boxes and slapping labels on it. But that is not helpful in a realm where you need to be in the non-dual both and I can perceive all the things and then pick and choose which ones I want to pay attention to. The example I use a lot is a river. There are multiple currents and multiple temperatures in a big river. And you are swimming in the river. You are the river. And you get to choose which current to move in and out of. And when you a tributary is coming into a river, you experience the tributary's experience. And then you blend together. In energy world, energy work, you blend with that person temporarily. And then you let go of it all when you're done. You sort of step in. You blend the energies. Our energies are always blended, though. See, this is the tricky part. And this is why we really want labels and categories. But they don't work. We're merged all the time. We can't not be merged because there's only one. So think of a slider in front of you. Like over to the left is all oneness all the time. 24-7 merged in the collective. Um, Like, um, you know, on Deep Space Nine, Odo, the the shapeshifter, would go home. He became a pool of gold and there was no individuality, right? So that's all the way on the left end. And then all the way on the right end is total a person who is just head just sense blind right they they believe that this life is it you live your life you do your thing you die and it's over and they don't they blo- have blocked out everything extrasensory they've blocked out everything that might be woo woo or whatever um they just they've just blocked it out so that's the far, far end. I'm an individual. There's nothing more than me. And, and that's that. Okay. So when we know how to play on that scale, we can go all the way to the right if we want to travel to a place that could be sensorily. Is that a word? It might have a lot of energy in it 
that we maybe don't want to engage with. Well, we're still in the energy, but we shut down our awareness of it so that we can function, right? Just like you have to tune out annoying noises. Sometimes I can do that. Sometimes I can't. But, uh, and there are some uh, noises that just send me over the edge. But you tune things out. You put noise in the background so that you can focus on what you're doing. But the noise is still there. It does. It's not going anywhere. You're shifting awareness. That's all psychicism and medium is. Is that's all it is. So it has to be grounded in the physical. Because then, if it's not grounded in the physical, then you have those people who are really ill. Like, they're psychic as fuck, but they're really sick because it's not grounded in the body. They generally gain a lot of weight. They might struggle with smoking and sugar and alcohol addictions. Like, they're, they're, it's not blended. It's, it's off kilter, right? They're too much time on the left side in the oneness. We can't neglect our physical body while we do this, but we're, you know, that's another thing that's been taught forever is, well, just ignore the body and spend all your time in the oneness. Well, that doesn't work. I think we've seen that. But again, so uh, the only thing I want to just offer you that other view of is don't categorize your, don't let the mind interfere with your development. When you're channeling, deliver the information as it comes. My mind still will say, really? Like even recently, my mind, I was delivering something that I thought I didn't like the word they were using. This happens to me a lot. I don't like the word that they're using. It's like seriously direct (laughs) or a little rude. Um, And so I'll want to change it. And they're like, no. In the beginning, they were like, do not change it. Deliver it. And sure enough, this, I, I will say sometimes in a reading, you know, this is the word they're using. Honestly, I feel a little uncomfortable about it. But this is the word that they're saying. And always that person's like, that's exactly what I needed to hear. That's exactly the same word I was just thinking about. And so there's been enough of those that I just trust it. But if I was worried about being right, or if I was trying to only access information in a way that's not easy and natural for me, I I would screw this up constantly. Ideally, you strip all that away and you go with pure perception, pure perception. You get on the phone with someone or you are doing readings, however you do them, um, you have a direct experience. You aren't using oracle cards or pendulums or any of those things. Those are great training tools for divination, which is different than psychic perception and mediumship. It's different. You don't have a tool. You are the tool. (laughs) that's hilarious but you know what I mean like it's you and the person and that's it there's nothing in between you there's nothing there's no labels restricting you you're able to shift your awareness over to the left the oneness the merging and perceive what that person's system is trying to say, trying to communicate, or what that person's uh, spirit guide or their deceased, deceased loved one is trying to communicate to them. You're an open conduit, a blank slate. You go in and you're like, here I am. I am this perceptive being. I've taken all, I've given full permission to perceive what this person is trying to say to themselves, right? We're, we're, we're like relay. We're like a, we call it a, when one cell phone tower bounces to another, to another, and the signal eventually gets where it needs to go. That's, kind of how I see myself like I'm receiving information that this person needs and for whatever reason they're not able to perceive it themselves usually 
like for all of us, our head is in the way, our mind is in the way, our doubt, our fear is running the show. So we don't perceive things clearly. And that's why we need each other. And especially if you're a projector, you're not going to see yourself clearly. If you're line five, that projection field works on you too. <laughs> Like you can't even see yourself clearly. So sometimes we need that help. If we get caught up in how that help comes, we screw it up. It's not pure. It's not as powerful. You might still get some stuff. I'm not saying that it won't work. I'm saying there's more. There's more. There's so much more available to you. It's a little bit like drinking from a Dixie cup. If y'all don't know what that is, it's a little paper cup. Do they even still make those anymore? Everybody, when I was growing up, had them in their bathroom. Like you like you couldn't just have a glass in the bathroom. They're little paper, tiny paper cups, like a shot glass, two or three ounces, that you drink water out of and then throw away, which is not good for the environment. But <laughs> you know what I mean? Like It's like having your psychic and mediumship experiences with the volume of a Dixie cup versus the volume of the ocean. It's that dramatic. When you're not afraid of anything that's in the ocean, if we're speaking literally, I'm terrified of the ocean. <laughs> but let's just stay in the metaphorical land of energy work. If you're not afraid of it, let's go back to the river. If you're not afraid of anything in the river, if you're not afraid of the cold water or the deep water or the warm water or the white water, if none of that scares you, you have so much ability to perceive so much information that you can deliver. You can deliver what they need for the day. Now, sometimes there's a lot there, but you know with your knowing that you're not to give them the whole thing. And often we're only shown the parts that we're allowed to give, the parts that that person is ready to hear or perceive for themselves. And sometimes I get stuff where I know they're not ready for it, but they're saying, leave this and they'll find it later. Sort of like, go ahead and say this and they're going to be like, huh? And then later it will click and that's fine. I'm just delivering. When you are practicing amplifying your ability to perceive, you have to recognize that it's all right there all the time. You're just shifting where you're looking. You're just opening a door so some information can come in. It's not your job to interpret it. It's definitely not your job to give advice. It's your job to deliver that information and trust that the person on the receiving end will understand it now or sometime in the future. To do all that, you do not need categories. You do not need to think about which category do I fit in. This is why we all love the Enneagram and astrology and human design. We love categories. Ooh, what type am I? Ooh, what's my authority? What am I supposed to be doing? What rules, this is what it comes down to, what rules am I supposed to be following? Because if I follow all the rules, then all my life is going to be paradise and, you know, honey buns. No. Not how it works. I'm sure y'all have figured that out by now. There are no rules to follow, but our mind loves them, and that's okay. That's okay. If you're stuck on which Claire am I, let's see if you can let that go. What would it be like if you just perceived the information and didn't worry about where it was coming from and didn't worry about if it fit the criteria to be called clairsentience? What if you just purely perceived and passed on your psychic information? What if you were just that pure conduit, that cell phone tower doesn't worry if it's sending the signal correctly. It just sends the signal. Signal comes in, it passes it off. Signal comes in, it passes it off. Psychic information and perception and things like that, the, the energy comes in, we pass it off. Energy comes in, we pass it off. We flow it through. We are the river. We're flowing, flowing. We can never run out. There is no scarcity. Life itself is abundant. We can't restrict the flow in reality. We can restrict it and get all fucking tangled up inside of our own heads. 
So play with that. Where are you on the continuum? Are you in the oneness? Do you need to go to the right and take a break from that and go outside and, and shut it all down? Do you need to go outside and be in the oneness, the different feeling of oneness when you're sitting in the woods? What do you? Where are you now? And where do you want to put your attention on? Where do you want to open perception? And again, this everyone has this. Everyone has the ability to perceive because you've got a vagus nerve and that's where it's all at. So you can explore that for yourself too. But so let me shut up babbling. I just wanted to say, watch out for labeling systems, even human design, even astrology, Enneagram, all that stuff, Myers-Briggs. It gets misused, right? Because our mind just digs it. That's fine. Let your mind chew on that bone. It loves it so much. I want to be this type. I'm this type, but I'd rather be that type. And just kind of stand back and have a chuckle at how cute your little brain is, that it's just running around like a border collie eating the furniture, trying to figure out which Claire it is. <laughs> okay, let that go. Explore pure perception and see how it goes. Uh, and again, if you're interested in uh, that deep apprenticeship work, um, the post is pinned at the top of my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Michelle Wolf 11. It's right there at the top. It's got a picture of the Herkimer diamond that um, was my initiation into channeling a group, a crystalline group energy, which is so weird. Uh, very strange. Still is very strange, but I just roll with it now. Um, and don't need the diamond now either, but still. Okay, check it out. Go for, go underneath all the mind stuff. Check out pure perception. No labels. Just standing there being the conduit and letting it flow. Don't analyze. Don't categorize. Just let it flow. See how it goes for you. And until we talk again, think less, feel more. I'll talk to you later.